It was a normal day in a small city in California. People were shooting off smuggled fireworks as they usually do around the area, and people drove by with their radios blasting rap music. The story starts with Brandon Hackwith. He was just enjoying a normal evening like any other, laying down on his twin-size bed, and is currently binging My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, and is currently watching the Equestria Girl special, Sunset's Backstage Pass. But unfortunately, she's a cartoon character. Oh well, a guy can dream. Suddenly, Brandon's portable DVD player began to spark ominously with a bluish glow, causing him to dart his eyes over the DVD set. Huh? The TV flashed brightly, blanketing the room in an ominous blue light as he got off his bed, shielding his eyes. Holy shit! What's going on? The silhouette appeared to be female, and it looked very similar. Soon, the silhouette was revealed to be none other than Sunset Shimmer, and she was animated in the Equestria Girls animation style. Okay, am I seriously experiencing a Who Framed Roger Rabbit situation here? You're Sunset Shimmer! I know I have schizophrenia and all, but this feels way too damn real. How are you even here? That is, if I'm not hallucinating and going completely insane and seeing things that aren't really there. Whoa! Whoa! Wh wh where am I? Is this some kind of dream or what? What... what is this place? Everything's so... different. I'm not sure, but I know for a fact that I'm not dreaming. Hallucinating? Possibly. I never knew my schizophrenia could ever get this bad. Ha! Who are you? I'm Brandon. Brandon Hathwit. And your Sunset Shimmer! Please tell me I'm just hallucinating and this isn't real, because if this is really real, I swear I'm gonna squeal! <coughs> Sunset then feels lightheaded and passes out falling into the carpet. Earlier that day had gone by normally. Everything seemed fine. Sunset was happy with her life. She was finally cleaning her attic like she said she would five weeks ago. She packed the last of her boxes when she decided to check the attic. She stopped, noticing an old tape set. Huh? How did that get there? Ugh, so dusty. Brushing off the dust, the VHS tape simply read, Home. The rest was scratched off. She remembered buying a box of these from a record shop for dirt cheap. Something to keep her entertained. Eh, why not? I've got nothing better to do. When she inserted the tape and pressed play, 
There was only static. Uh, what the heck? Static? <laughs> what a ripoff. Whatever. I'm gonna hit the hay. She ejected the defunct tape and threw it into the bin. Normally I would be upset, but I guess you get what you pay for. Besides, not all of the tapes were bad. Some of them were pretty good. She lay still on the floor, unconscious, but breathing. Hey, are you alright? Wake up! Please, speak to me! Brandon yelled. Hey, you're gonna be okay. I got you. Brandon proceeded to carry her towards the portal. And he heard an ethereal voice say, John Jr., Uncle John, and everyone else. I'll miss you all. Thanks for all of the memories, both good and bad. I'll always remember you guys, and I'll always keep you close to my heart. He exclaimed with sorrow, tears running down his cheek as he entered the portal. to a familiar world? Whoa! Oh my god! Ah! Brendan looked at his hands, taking notice of his new surroundings. Whoa, freaky. I'm a cartoon. That's insane. He then looked at the street below and recognized it immediately as Sunset Street. No way! I'm in Cantalot City! I can't believe this is happening! Oh my god! As he jumped up and down, the roof cracked under him. Before he knew it, the crack eventually got bigger. Well damn, this blows. And he fell through the roof. Ah! Ah, jeez. Sunset awoke from her sleep, hearing the loud crash come downstairs. Huh? What the hell was that? Sunset quickly goes downstairs to see the cause of the crash and saw... A person. Whoa, hey, are you okay? Ugh, I feel like I got hit by a train. My head hurts like hell. Ow. God, that hurts. <sighs> I can't imagine falling through the roof like that. What happened exactly? I don't know. You were just sort of uh, fell through my roof, I guess. Do you know? Brandon then remembered how he got here, as if it came back to him. Oh, I remember now. You came through a portal on my portable DVD player, I think, and I followed you here. After hearing a strange voice telling me that my existence would become intertwined with this world, whatever that means. Yeah, whatever that means indeed. Ah. Uh, uh, everything all right? Um, no, I don't think so. I could use an Advil. Do you have any? She points up the stairs. In the bathroom, behind the mirror. Thanks. I'm gonna go get one. 
Sure. All or if you need me. Thanks again. You're welcome. Now, <sighs> do you mind telling me your name? I'm Sunset Shimmer. How about you? I'm Brandon. Brandon Hackwith. Nice to meet you, Sunset. Brandon blushes a little bit. Brandon Hackwith. Weird. I could have sworn I've heard that name somewhere before. Well, yeah. I told you earlier, remember? You came through my portable TV player, and I'm pretty sure I told you my name then, too. Wait. Earlier? So you're telling me it wasn't a dream? Well, no. At least I don't think so. It feels real. Brandon then placed his hand on Sudden Such cheek, which felt exactly as soft as a girl's cheek from his world. The same texture, everything. You definitely feel real. You're going to feel something in a moment if you don't get your hand off my cheek. Sorry, sorry. Brandon quickly takes his hand off nervously, a bit intimidated by the fiery-haired girl's threat. It's fine. Probably a side effect of the medication. That, and you hit your head pretty hard when you fell. Well, tell you what. You take the bed, I'll take the couch for tonight. There's one thing Fluttershy taught me. It's that a good rest can always mend injuries. Think you can walk up those stairs by yourself, or do you need some help? I think so. Ow, ow, ow. Brandon then collapsed back into the couch due to a sprained ankle. Nope. Can't walk. Figures. Some debris did hit your leg pretty bad. Alright, come here, you big baby. Sunset wraps Brandon's arm around her shoulder, helping him upstairs. Thanks for this, Sunset. Seriously. I seriously owe you one for this. You really didn't have to do this for me, but you did. You've been so kind to me. Just thank you. From the bottom of my heart. It was clear to Sunset that Brandon truly meant what he said. He was truly thankful for all that she had done to welcome him into this world. No one had ever been this kind to him before. Ah, uh, don't mention it. You're new here and, well, I figured this was the least I could do. See you in the morning. Have a good rest. Okay. <sighs> Sunset. Brandon had eventually drifted off into a deep sleep, as the hours had passed, and he began to dream that he was on a romantic date with Sunset. I love you so much, Sunset. Let's enjoy this time together for as long as we possibly can. I wouldn't have it any other way, you dork. Now shut up and kiss me already. But before you do... There's something I need you to do. What's that, my beautiful princess? Wake, Wake up! Brandon then shot out of his sleep, panting heavily. Geez, Sunset, what was that for? I was having a dream. Not about you or anything. Someone's here to see you. Now get your scrawny butt out of bed. Okay, okay, geez. Wait, someone is here to see me? Who? I just got here yesterday, and I've only met you so far. A fairly tall blonde woman wearing a red velvet turtleneck and navy blue jeans comes upstairs. Oh, hello. Oh, um, hi. My name's Brandon. It's nice to meet you. Brandon said, feeling a bit shy around this unfamiliar woman. I happen to be new in this neighborhood. Sunset and I were just talking about how you needed some parents to take care of you. Are you... Willing to accept us as your adoptive parents? Brandon's face immediately lit up with joy and excitement. Perhaps he could have a new life here after all. Wait, really? Are you serious? <laughs> yes, I am serious. Don't worry. He doesn't bite. So, you'll be my new mom? Brandon asked with excitement and eagerness. Yes, I will. I even have the adoption papers already signed. Brandon then frowned a little bit. Just so you know... I came here from somewhere really far away, so the city is very unfamiliar to me. Lightning Star immediately <gasps> gasped in shock. How long were you on your own? Brandon blushed a little bit from embarrassment. I mean, if you really want to know the truth, pretty much less than a day. 
I literally just got here yesterday, almost instantly too. It was almost as if I got here instantly, like through a portal. Are you all right? What happened to your leg? Are you hurt, baby? I'm fine. I just fell through the roof. I just sprained my ankle a bit. Brendan rolled his eyes with a shy smile. And so it begins. Sprained? Ankle? You are not fine, mister. You are hurt. No, this will not do. I am calling off work. Sunset, can you let my husband know? Already on it, Miss Star. Excellent. Now then, to tend to this awful wound. Brandon looked down sheepishly at his feet. So, um, is it official then? Are you my new mom now? Yes, and from now on, I will care for you. Thanks. Oh yeah, since you're my new mom, there's a lot I'm gonna need to explain to you. Lightning Star takes Brandon's arm, leading him into his new home. Sunset is outside talking to a man who seems to be surprised, but is more surprised when he sees his wife pull their newfound son inside their house and into the kitchen. Now just who exactly is she bringing in this time? It's your new son. Oh, oh! Well, unfortunately, I've gotta get to work. I'll see him better after I get home, though. The man then gets into his car, starting up the engine as he drives off towards his job. Easy, Mom, not so rough. My ankle still hurts. Oh, and I hope you don't mind me calling you Mom. Sorry, sweetie. I'm just very worried about you. Now you just lay there and relax, okay? Lightning then lies Brandon down over the couch in the living room. Lightning had been waiting for this moment for a very long time. She had been trying to adopt a child for a very long time. But each time she had tried, the child was either a troublemaker or all of the children had been adopted already. Lightning had been wanting to be a mother for a long time, and she was so happy that her chance had finally come, she could just cry. Brandon got comfortable on the couch, resting his hurt ankle on the pillow placed underneath it by Lightning. That is okay though, right? Me calling you mom? I just want to make sure is all. You are perfectly fine calling me whatever you want. Okay, thank you, mom. Brandon smiled. Brandon waited for his new mother to come back with some ice. <sighs> I'm honestly really excited to have a new family. Maybe I really can have a new life here. Brandon said, talking to no one in particular, just himself. Lightning then returned with a pack of ice for his ankle. Sweetie! I got some ice for that nasty wound. Hope this will soothe it. You be sure to rest and relax, okay? And if you need anything, don't hesitate to call for me. Okay, I understand. Also, um, I'm kind of bummed because, well, I didn't intend on coming here so suddenly. All my electronics are back in my old home, so I literally have no way to use the internet. My whole life was on the internet. Hmm, we'll have to change that. If you go to school, which you will, by the way, you'll need a way for us to contact you. Yeah. Um, so, is there, like, any way I could get a cell phone, possibly? I recently bought a new phone. I'll give you my old one to use for now. She walks off for a moment, returning with a fancy smartphone and charger. Oh, thanks, Mom. I appreciate it. So, um, do I have any siblings? Not yet. You'll be our first. Oh, well, that's okay. I don't mind. I kind of miss being an only child, to be honest. Well, don't get too used to it. We plan to have many, many children. Well, that's fine. I'm happy to have a big family as long as I'm accepted into it. Brandon said with a smile. She smiles, seemingly glad to hear this. Can I have a hug? Brandon asked with a sheepish smile. Of course, you're always welcome to hug me. Lightning then opened her arms, and Brandon then gave her a big, warm hug. Brandon had felt happier than he ever felt in his entire life. He finally had a new family, 
and he was feeling much better about starting a fresh new life in a brand new world. Thank you, Mom. I hope it isn't too soon to say this, but I love you, Mom. I love you too, my son. I can't wait to meet my dad. Lightning gave a warm smile. She couldn't be more happy to have a new son after all these years of trial and error. You definitely need to rest first before you meet your dad, especially with that sprained ankle. Okay, I understand, Mom. But, um, can I tell you the truth about me? I truly hope you'll still want to be my mom after I tell you this. It's not bad, but it may shock you. What could possibly shock me? Well, you'll understand better when I explain it to you. <sighs> okay, here goes. Basically, I'm from another world. I came here through a wormhole. After I saw Sunset land in my room, she was unconscious, and I went through the portal, knowing I may never see my family ever again, and well, the wormhole closed, I fell through Sunset's roof, and now, I'm stuck here forever. Basically, there's no hope of me ever returning home. Brandon paused, gathering his thoughts. It honestly really hurts, knowing I'll never see John Jr., my Aunt Mary, Uncle John, Jason, my sister Maddie, Zach, or any of my other friends, and I can never return home. But, I'm willing to start fresh in a new world. After all, I did always dream of coming here. It's just... It's just hard knowing that I won't get to have John Jr.'s leftover food and coffee anymore. But I'll always remember the good memories he and I shared. Oh! Oh, you... Oh, you poor thing! Come here! In spite of a sprained ankle, Brandon stood up to hug and embraced his new and loving mother. I love you, Mom. Thank you for accepting me into your life. Lightning couldn't hold back her tears any longer. Tears of joy began to stream down her cheeks. She was just so happy to love her son, and to have him love her just the same. I love you too, Brandon. I'm happy to have you as my new son. To be continued. However, not everything is as it seems. On the other side of downtown Canterlot City, a packed tour van was traveling on the road again. However, there was a complication. <sighs> Great, another red light. Again? How many traffic lights does this street have? Too many. Hmm? What's up, Daji? I think I saw a human. You reckon we should go talk with it? If it gets us out of this traffic light trouble, then yes. Yay! A new boy toy! Well, that depends on whenever he's not. He's actually worth keeping, Sonata. Ah. Okay. Hey, you. Do you think you can help us? We're in a bit of a hurry, and we need to be somewhere. As a matter of fact, I can. How did that? Oh. Nah, I, I mean, I'm keeping recording, so it... Huh? Do, 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 somebody is... 
I always feel like somebody's watching me. Do 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 do. I always feel like somebody's watching me. Hope this will soothe it. You be sure to re relax and rest, okay? And if you need anything, don't hesitate to call me. I'm gonna try that again because that was absolute cringe. I also have a Nintendo Switch. Don't ask why. I'm in my 40s and I have one of those. <laughs> wow. Wait, you're actually in your 40s? No, I'm not actually in my 40s. That was just... A <laughs> you know how sometimes people will add things into a line? That oh, that was yeah, a joke. I know, like, yeah, I, I know you're trying to improv off the line. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Again? How many traffic lights? <clears throat> Let's try that again. With this Twilight Ducky Murak. <laughs> Lightning Star takes Brandon's arm, leading him to his new room. New home. Lightly. Uh, lightly. <laughs> to be continued. Credits roll. Post credit scene. <laughs> <laughs>